<laughs> All righty, folks, we are back on the Zoom <laughs> with one of the leading ladies in the cannabis industry, Ms. Priscilla Vilches. Welcome. Hey, Welcome. Thank you Welcome. Thank you, so much for me. Hey, you know what to do when we sit down, right? What do I, we do? We count to three and then we sit down and we stream wah. You got it? Okay, we got One, it. One, two, three, wah! wah! She was oh. good at taking so, uh, let, me, let me start this off. I was very excited about this interview because, okay, me too. Me as too, I was actually. telling you before, um, you know, I, I consider myself a marijuana advocate. I bring it up on the show. My boss is always telling me, stop talking about it so much. <laughs> but now I feel I can admit it. You know, I have a, I have a prescription. Good. And I've been smoking for a lot of my life. It helps me with anxiety. It helps me okay. with a lot of things. Although I'm trying to smoke less, i got to be honest with you. Okay. What I want to know before we get into your personal story and how you got involved in the industry is what is going on with marijuana right now, particularly in California. Is it going to be completely legal in January? It's, it seems like it's still in some sort of gray area. Yeah, what's, I what's, what's the status? So, as you know, come January 1st, we're going recreational. Okay. So people are still allowed to uh, use their medical card or... At age 21, you can go into a dispensary and purchase it yourself, just like alcohol. Or so like it's a becoming cigarette. highly regulated, correct. Okay. So Big Pharma is going to be getting involved now, the big companies? I would say Big Pharma's have been always trying to get involved. Uh, ultimately, the only reason I got into the industry was for uh, the people. It was for uh, medical the medical portion yeah, of Can it. you tell us a bit about like what led you into the industry Absolutely. and how you got started? Well, well so, before, tell us what okay, you are right now. Exactly, yeah, tell thank us what you, you are thank right you. now. You are the CEO of a brand. So I, I applied uh -huh. in 2014 in uh -huh. the state of Nevada, uh -huh. and I was the youngest female uh, to obtain the cultivation and production license. So I'm able to grow mm -hmm. in a big manuf you know, industrial building right. and manufacture, so okay. I can make Edibles, lubricants. Lubricants uh, are made out of weed? Absolutely, especially in Vegas. Oh, oh my Jesus Christ. She's like the godmother of weed. <laughs> yes, she and is. Like, she's literally. la padrina of weed. So, okay. la reina de weed. <laughs> are you like la reina of the suit of Linwood or something? So very recently, I also applied to California, okay. and I won. I was the only female wow. who uh, was Girl able to power. get her. Can you tell people, because there's a, like, a lot of money involved just to get the license. Can you like give us some figures, some numbers, oh so that people can understand how difficult it is just to even do that? And how is that? this going to affect drug dealers and stuff like that, now that it's going recreational? Well, it actually does us better. The black market is going to be pushed out. Okay. Oh. So people are going to go into the store and purchase it, rather than buy it from someone in an alley. It's, it's actually a lot better. Right. Crime, yeah. you know, crime rates go down. Let me answer your Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying you guys are jumping ahead. I'm really stuff. good at dodging. Yeah, I'm really happening. good. So okay. your original question was, yeah. where are we now? Right. So I applied in California, and I got what I obtained in Nevada, mm -hmm. but also a transportation distribution license. Okay. That's a big deal. Okay. Um, what I plan to do, my ultimate goal, is to get it one day reimbursable by insurance carriers. Okay. It's not just big money. A lot of people think, oh my God, you know, put your money together and let's go apply. Mm -hmm. It's not like that. It's extremely highly regulated. I have to go, I had to go through FBI background checks. Wow. I mean, it was so intrusive. They had to know how many cars I owned. Whoa. They wanted to know everything about me. Wow. Why so do I have to know all this stuff? It's not peaches and cream. Uh, it's because these licenses are, are extremely uh, important and okay. you have to be in, you know, the right hands. Okay. I came from a healthcare background, so that helped me a lot. I work with physicians on a day-to-day -day base. The only reason I invested and decided to go into marijuana was because I kept seeing an opioid addiction with mm -hmm. physicians mm -hmm. and patients. Right. People becoming addicted. So I thought there's got to be an alternative. So in 2013, I called my lawyers and I said, we're going to get into marijuana. Get me the best team the best lobbyist, the best everything, and here we are today. Do you smoke marijuana yourself or use any of the I, products? I was told, I grew up in a Latino home, that if I touched it, I would die. Yeah, that <laughs> I was grew basically like me this. too. My grandma, my grandpa, <sighs> oh my God, if we even, I remember walking in the park smelling it, and they were like, oh, it's a skunk. It smells similar. You know, very back similar. then, I didn't know, but uh, it was very frowned upon. Mm -hmm. um, but I can honestly say, with uh, knowledge and and research, I explained to my parents, my abuelitos, mm -hmm. everyone, and explained to them that there is a good in, in marijuana. There's CBD, there's THC. I know you're gonna have beautiful questions for me later. Uh, yeah. But there's so many good things that come from it now, and it's helping so many people. So Are your advocates. abuelitos smoking? They don't smoke, they're <laughs> CBD takers. They're, oh. they're eating it in gummy bears. Or you what? have to break that down for Explain me because I don't know Explain the difference between CBD and THC. Okay, and so there's a marijuana plant, Mm -hmm. And there's two components, THC and CBD. CBT is the non-psychoactive hallucinogenic behavior that you get. It's basically what they're giving kids with epilepsy. Okay. And they're giving you know cancer patients everywhere right now. 
THC is the stuff that everyone likes the to smoke. The recreational. The recreational portion of it that people will go into the store come, you know, January 1st to, to feel, you know, euphoria. That is the difference. So, so even if you come from out of state, like you can just purchase the weed come January 1st and you won't, it won't be illegal. Over. Okay. Because every time that I have a friend here come from out of state, they're like, we're going to get weed. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't smoke it. You know, am I going to get arrested? Well, no. Bruno, Bruno, I don't want to uh, throw Bruno out there and say that he, he, he may or may not smoke it like me. I do. So okay. Bruno, he has a question. <laughs> I just have, Go I'm on. very worried because what I think will happen with legalization is that the quality will go down and the price will go up. Can you comment oh, on that at, at all? all. Um, there are new state mandate things that you have to do, policies mm -hmm. and procedures just like anything else. We have to get everything tested. The, you know, the potency, everything's going to be there right. by law. Come January 1st, we have to, oh, we have so to even test potency everything. And, okay, got oh it, my got God, it. everything. No so pesticides. To. It's going to be a lot cleaner than you buying it Great. from an alley or the black market. Right. That, so that means you yeah. do smoke it then. You have to try it. I don't smoke it. I'm a CBD taker. I CBD. take CBD. Okay. And what, uh, what, why do you take? Why do you take it? Oh my God! It helps me sleep at night. Everyone should take CBD. CBD is great. Yeah, you know, you can relaxing. buy CBD at Whole Foods and Trader Joe's. Oh wow! Yeah. Um, well, I mean, one, one very, of the things. It's very common. Look, when I was young, when I was 20, 21, I actually grew pot. I had uh, four lights in a closet. <laughs> oh you know, this God. is actually how I got through college. No, this is how, <laughs> statute of limitations. I got through college this way. I, got, I was able to do an internship and not worry about, you know, paying my rent and all that stuff because uh, I got kicked out of the house at 19 very early. Yeah. But do not because of the marijuana. But, you know, when you d deal with dealers, you don't know what you're getting and you have to get whatever they have at the time. Yeah, it's actually when I started ass. going to stores, I was like, wow, I have an option. I can see which is the highest THC because I go mm -hmm. for the THC uh, levels and all that Absolutely. stuff. And, and, and you actually have, you know, a, a, you're able to pick and you have discretion. <laughs> Pass the J. Pass the what? I'm kidding. I don't the J. Know. That's don't what know. we used to call it in Miami, a joint. Oh, I don't, oh, the, oh, that's what it stands for. I was like, who? Jade? What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, folks, we are back with Priscila Vilci. So, um, um, when, when, uh, I lost my train of thought, honey. Maybe, maybe I smelled something too, and that's why. No, <laughs> you've been in my stash, what are you doing? But no, let's start, let's no, start I with you. know, so there's a lot of advocacy, obviously, for weed, especially in California, right? Sure. Nevada, blah, blah, blah. A lot of people love it. I get all the medicinal, 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 whatever, mm -hmm. um, advantages of it and all that stuff. But I want to know how, like, when is the part where you don't actually recommend it? What are the cons Got of it? it? Because everybody can talk about the pros of weed and oh, it's amazing for this and this and this and that. But there's a lot of people that are against it, right? No so, problem. So uh, what are the cons from your point of view, from your perspective? And so, she's, she meant pros. I know. No pros. pros okay. and no, no. So what did I say? So pros. listen, <laughs> just like everyone else, everything you just said is very normal. Okay. It's extremely normal. People are out there. People watching. I, you know, I discuss this with people every day. It's called community outreach. Explain to them. In Linwood, there were families out there who said, I don't want, you know, a marijuana facility right. near my children's school. Oh. It, was, it was very common for families to ask this. But what they don't realize is, and that these are pros, I'm trying to give you a con, but they're really, in my aspect, there isn't many. Look how many jobs I'm going to create. Look how much money I'm going to give to the city that's going to be donated to all the schools. What about the parents? Everything's highly regulated. It's not like we're going to be like a drug dealer selling it in an alley. You have to come into the, to the store just like you purchase alcohol. Mm -hmm. 21 and over, everything's going to be regulated. As far as how do I explain to a parent, don't, you know, yes or no, there's CBD and there's THC. You have to explain to them everything. Explain to them, I've got videos of... of Children that we've monitored from like uh, born to one years old to four who have now been able to go to school because they're taking CBD. And this all comes yeah. from a marijuana plant. Do you think that the city of Linwood accepted to have this uh, f plant in their city because other ritzier cities may not have wanted that? And well, there's also green zones, zones though. No. There's green zones, right? the city of, No, the city of Linwood actually is very smart because they're doing it for the community. They're doing it because of how much money they're going to be able to increase and, and make the yeah. city better. So they've been front and center, and they've paved the way for other cities now to say, you know what, we want to do it too. And the families I've learned in Linwood 
are very uh, accepting to the medical aspect. The okay. recreational is where they're having a little difficult time. That's, that's where yeah. I have a difficult time myself because how, what about it being like the gate, so to speak, to other drugs? Because a lot of people say that, right? That first is, you know, marijuana is the door to everything else. I would say it's, so it's to each is their own. It, people say that about alcohol. Mm -hmm. And we've had it here for right. ages. And, and that, Don't that drink and drive, yeah. buy it at age 21, and you still have the kids who are yeah. out at Christmas parties drinking it, you know. Well, I, I actually think sorry. alcohol, let, let, you know, that, that's one argument that I always push back on because I'll tell you this, if I smoke a joint of marijuana, I'm probably gonna stay home, write, read, watch TV, order a pizza. If I drink alcohol, now all of a sudden I'm probably more predisposed so to trying all these the crazy individual. things. It I was depends on say. the individual, their tolerance, and yeah, absolutely. how you see. Right. I, I can't speak thing. for everyone else, right. but it, it's, it's takes, you know, everything has to be taken accordingly. And sometimes you have a personality that you're gonna go, you know, far in terms of substance abuse and marijuana was just along the way. It wasn't necessarily the thing that pushed you there. Um, I, I have some questions in, in my One more thing, I yeah, wanna say ahead. a positive thing. Yeah. I know you wanted to hear all the cons or pros, but you can't overdose on marijuana. No deaths have ever happened on marijuana. No deaths, Did Oh, you know wait, that? wait, okay, I thought you were saying that as no, like a you warning. you can't but overdose you're on saying, marijuana. Okay. Okay, I'm getting I'm getting in my ear this question about the driving, and, and I actually saw a documentary a few years ago where they did a study, and okay. they did a study between a person who drank alcohol, who had two uh, cocktails, and a person who smoked two joints. And then they had a person who drank two, uh, two uh, drinks and smoked two joints. The worst driver in the test was the person who only drove, uh, drank alcohol. The person who slowly smoked joints drove slow and careful. And the person who drank alcohol but also smoked joints drove safer than the person who was just drunk because they were paranoid. And I love that. I got one stat <laughs> There's your driving conversation. It wasn't so expected. I've got one stat for you, and this is yeah. accurate. You guys can all Google this. In all the states where medical marijuana have been approved, there's been 25% less overdose on opioids. Yeah. How do you like that? I mean, quite sure. frankly, I do it's believe with, with everything, I mean, I'm, and I'm just asking these right. questions. I'm sure a lot of people and viewers, you know, are probably on my same boat when it comes to asking these things. But I do believe that weed is a little bit better than alcohol or much better because it doesn't give you We're a hangover. We're softening you up. You're coming it doesn't over give you to what? the good No, no, no. Like, I've always had this thought. It's just that it's it's still a little taboo for certain people. Yeah, it is And, very taboo. you know, me included, my family included, there's a lot of research, I mean, that we still need to do. There's a lot of reading that we need education. to do. A lot of education, of course. Um, but, yeah, when it comes to alcohol, not only the hungover thing, Mm. That weed doesn't give you. I mean, maybe with weed, you're gonna just be, you know, you, you'll have fatter people because <laughs> of the munchies. Oh, well, yeah, that's another. You know, and you're gonna help argument. create more jobs with the pizza makers and the mm. burger makers. Cause <laughs> <I'm gonna> say, <laughs> and yeah. the candy stores are gonna be like <laughs> millionaires after. No, it does have the munchies things. But uh, how do you feel about the way marijuana, you know, you're talking about being taboo. Guys, to me, I feel like it's finally not being taboo. I, I, I mean, you're seeing shows on TV that are dealing with it, they're, you know, uh, making food out of it. I mean, Viceland, half of their network. Right. It's all weed you stuff. Guys, so coming from a Latino family and having all my family living in Mexico, like they don't live here, it's so much different. Yeah. And also, you know, I mean, but even growing up here, it's all. It is because we're Latinos. I grew up the same way. I'm telling you, my parents. You touch it, you're gonna die. Well, this huh. is how I grew up. Yeah. How long did it take you? For, uh, take, how long did it take you to change their perception? I <laughs> sat with them, and this is what I do with everyone, even uh, the, the people who live in the city of Lenwood, or the people in the state of Nevada. Mm -hmm. I speak to families, I speak to elderly people, and I literally sit down with them, and I even bring my iPad, and I show them the benefits of CBD and THC, mm -hmm. and even combined. And then you know, there's uh, topicals mm -hmm. for for pain. Right. My grandmother's on blood thinners. She right. can't take oral pain medications because it'll, it'll, uh, it, there's, uh, it, it doesn't sit well with her blood thinners. So she can't take it. So she's got to be in pain. There's a topical we created that's got CBD, THC. She's, she's, she just applies it and doesn't affect her. Wow. There you go. My yeah. grandma's a cannabis. There you go. Yeah. And, and things like this, it's not always about smoking it. It's about helping, helping people. There's a menstrual cream now mm -hmm. for women on their periods. Wow. Yeah, that's it's awesome. just a big deal. That's really it, cool. it's here to stay. It, it is a big that's deal, really and, cool. and time is wrapping up. First of all, personally, I want to thank you not only because thank you're you. here and you're talking <laughs> about this issue in a way that is presentable, and 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 my abuelita could watch this interview and say, "Wow, that woman is such a professional, upstanding woman." Thank you. But you're a good representative of our community. You're a good representative of Latina women, thank and you. I think it's amazing that you're at the forefront of this multi-billion-dollar industry and you're representing us. So thank you for coming.